Hello everyone, how are you? I watched Friday Night Smackdown last night. Here to give you the match results for what happened on Smackdown in the main event for January the 14th, 2022. Main event first. Got a special treat. NXT superstars. Good NXT superstars. Not the current people on the current show. Except like somebody, Rick Steiner's son, the NXT World Champion. He's good. But like this is Tommaso Champ up. He done. Some of the superstars that made NXT what they were back in the day. Tommaso Ciampa took on T-Bar one-on-one. Now, I noticed they got T-Bar's trunk saying the Tyrant. So maybe that's what the T stands for, T-Bar, Tyrant Bar or something. Good match. Um, both guys just punished each other. They both hit back-to-back -back big boots to stun each other. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa had a nice running explosive clothesline. Um, he went off the top rope. T-Bar caught him, had a, a turtle roll side slam. Those level champa. Then he hauled off and kicked his back like he was going for a field goal in soccer. Um, Tommaso Champa um, started fighting back again. He went for a move and T Bar grabbed a hold of him and hit a backbreaker. Then went to do it again and Tommaso Champa flipped over and pinned him for the one, two, three. Second match of main event the Bruiserweight P. Dunn took on a Kara Toes Out. Good match, folks. Check it out. Back and forth, um, Pete Dunne, he worked on the shoulder of Kara Tozawa when he could. He bit those fingers like a wishbone. He stomped on that hand. He just destroyed Kara Tozawa's hands. But Tozawa gave him quite a fight. In one move, he did a nice drop kick, which spun Pete Dunne around like a complete 360. And Pete Dunne landed upwards, stun-like. Um, Kara Tozawa had a nice back body drop. Um, Pete Dunn, give him one as well to return the favor. Um, Kerito Zawa hit a Insiguri kick. He went for a second one, and Pete Dunn blocked it. And then he delivered a snap German suplex, double stumped on the hands. Insiguri kick, hit the one, two, three off his finisher. I forget what he calls that finisher, but it's a pretty cool finisher. And picked up the win. Let me know below if you know what Pete Dunn's finisher is called. I'd like to know. I can't remember it. That's the problem. Now on to SmackDown. SmackDown had four matches, folks. Three of them were good to watch. One was total garbage. The one, to me, I thought was total garbage was the women's match. Natalia against Aaliyah. I was looking forward to this match when I read online that they were going to wrestle. Because both these girls are good talent. Performers. Um, then they did this whole thing where Natalia was talking about the shortest match in WWE history. is three points, somewhat seconds. So I knew going to this match what was going to happen. Sure enough, you can call it Claire's Day. Before the bell rung, Natalia attacked Aaliyah. Sent her face first on the ropes. Into the turnbuckle. Mothole stumps in the corner. Stone Cold Steve Austin used to do. Referee was debating to have Aaliyah continue and all. Aaliyah said, jumped up. I'm fine. Let's go. Bell rings. She cricked the pins to Natalia. And pairing 3.17 seconds. Which I guess is a second less than the record they're going with. They didn't care much for that at all. Now onto the matches that we were good on SmackDown. Sheamus took on Ricochet, folks. One on one. Um, Ricochet debuted of new music. I'm not a big fan of it. I love his original. The one and only. Sheamus um got sick and tired of Ricochet applying a series of headlock takedowns. Um so he hit Ricochet with a nice shoulder tackle. Then he did that um ten bows. Of the Bowery or something. Forearm smashes over the ropes. Um, he went for a power bomb And Ricochet countered it. Into her Karana. Sent Sheamus over the top rope. Um, he did a move. Knocked down Sheamus outside the ring. Then he went for another move off the ring apron. And Sheamus pulled him off. And canopied him underneath the ring apron edge. Where there's like metal spars. Like gold cake bees and all that stuff. Ricochet was grabbing his throat. That had to hurt. Um, Seamus started punishing Ricochet like blows to the back. Um, Irish curse backbreaker. And then Ricochet had a series of combo moves that was cool. A jawbreaker, a springboard hip on off the ropes. And then a springboard knee strike. Then as he had Seamus caught between the top and bottom rope, like he was hanging there, Ricochet bounced off the ropes and a moonsault. That was cool to see. But Ricochet got cocky one too many times, dove off, springed off the ropes again to do a move, and Sheamus just blasted him with a bro kick for the one, two, three. And Sheamus dedicated that win to his partner, Rich Holland, who's out with a broken nose. 
Kofi Kingston took on Riddick Moss with Baron Corbin ringside. Now, unfortunately, we got some bad news, folks. Two top SmackDown superstars have suffered injuries. Sasha Banks is out six to eight weeks with a broken foot. Because of a match, she had a live show with Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair apparently did a little bit of backbreaker. And Sasha, when she came down, she landed on her foot the wrong way and broke it. Sasha Banks going to miss the Royal Rumble match, which sucks. Every year she puts on an awesome performance in that Rumble match. And Xavier Woods is out of game of injury. Um, he Apparently last week in the street fight against Usos, he tore his pectoral muscle. Um, he continued the match. Apparently it happened early on. He continued the match. Which I guess he should not have done because he caused more injury to it. He's out four to six weeks. Um, which sucks because he was on such a great roll. Like King of the Ring winner. Feuding with Roman Reigns and the Usos. And now he's injured. It seems like every time Xavier Woods starts getting a lot of momentum going, he gets injured. Which sucks. It's like a curse to that guy. So Kobe Kingston's in the War Rumble match though. To represent the New Day from SmackDown. Big E's also in the World War I match, but he's on Raw. Um, great match between Kobe Kingston and Riddick Moss, folks. Check it out. Kobe quickly hit a nice series of kick strikes. Um, sent Riddick Moss to the outside of the ring. He did the trust ball dive, knocked both of them out. Uh, Moss catch Kobe coming and hit a nice explosive back slam. Kobe at one point got tossed into the ropes and he bounced off the metal turnbuckle and hit a drop kick on Reddick Moss. He just floored him. Um, then he hit the boom drop. He went for the trouble in paradise. Baron Corbin caused a distraction, so Kobe went for it, he missed. Um, but he did hit a cross body on Reddick Moss. Um, but Reddick Moss held on to it and stopped the free count and Went for a, a slam, but Kobe countered it. Went for SOS, but Rick Moss raked his eyes and hit the neck breaker, which is now called the punchline. That's the finish called the punchline for the one, two, three. Riddick Moss, I'm a big fan of him. Again, he's on a winning streak. So hopefully this time to keep him around, because every time he's on a winning streak, they just don't put him on TV for a while, which makes no sense. But definitely check out that match. The only other match happened on SmackDown. Fatal 4-Way. Tag Team Number One Contenders Match. The winners will face the Usos for the SmackDown Tag Team Titles. The Usos introduced the challengers and made fun of them. You had the Viking Raiders, Roberto Carrillo and Garza, Jinder Mahal and Shanky, and Cesaro and Mansoor. The only issue I had with this was last week on SmackDown, Baron Corbin and Reddick Moss dominated the Viking Raiders. And won that match. Shishin, they've been in the fit of four ways. They've saw Saro Monsor. But I get it. They had to have two good teams, two bad teams. Um, good fit of four way tag. A lot of action happened. Um, before the bell rung, the Usos delivered super kicks. One of them hit um, her. Um, who was it? Sorry. They hit um, Monsor and it was either her brother, Korea, or guys, or somebody else. Um, Shanky delivered that massive clothesline he does um, to Eric. Um, then Jenna Mahal kicked away and punched away at him. Um, Roberto Korea and Monsoor tagged in. They traded Atomic Drops. They did one to the other. Arvar, the Viking Raiders, tagged in. He clotheslines to Cyro, Monsoor, Angel Gaza, Roberto Korea, all to the outside. He was dominating that match until Cesaro... And Jim Hall decided to team up on him and deliver a top rope superplex. But at the same time they did that, Eric of the Viking Raiders delivered the power bomb on one of them to make a, the Tower of Doom move happen. Um, Cesaro, he dominated her Burrow Creel. He just destroyed him. Rapid fire punches to the midsection in a corner. He caught Arvai coming at him with an uppercut. He big boot down Shanky. Mahal ended his momentum with the Colossus Slam. Um, the Viking Raiders end up winning the match with the Viking Experience on Angel Gaza and Roberto Carrillo for the one, two, three. After the match, the Usos told them they weren't going to, to win the titles. I good match, and this is why I like with the fate of full weight. They didn't they had like, everybody involved, I guess, at some point. Like, they didn't have like two guys fighting out. Like there was three guys at one point fighting out, and then all four guys were fighting it out. 
Um, that's what I like. Not just having like one tag team stay out there for like almost the whole match to like, quickly tag in and win it. Like everybody got a chance to showcase what they can do. Um, guys that have broke Korea, I like them as a tag team a lot, but they really got to change their cost their attires. It's hard to tell them apart now because they all wear black hair and black trunks with flames on them. Have one of them wear like red flames and how I want to wear green flames or something. Just change it up so you can tell the difference of who they are in the ring. There you have it, folks. Definitely check out main event. Definitely check out those free matches on SmackDown. It's not even worth watching Aliyah versus Natalia for 3.17 seconds. It's a total waste of TV time. And announce next week on SmackDown. Now, Naomi won at Payback against Sony Deville for abusing a power of authority as Joe Manager. And she also wanted to rematch a shot of Flair to beat her for the SmackDown Women's title. So Adam Paris, the other co jail manager, made the match next week. Naomi versus Shot of Flair. But again, it's not for the title. Because it's Shot of Flair. She only defends it whenever the hell she wants to. Instead, if Naomi wins, eventually she would get a title shot. That's why I like when anybody else was SmackDown Women's Champion. They defend that title whenever they want it to, not have this contender series matches like two three weeks in a row and that stuff stay safe everybody too sweet bye